Can everybody hear me? Yes. I hear an echo. Okay. Very good. Okay. Move over. Move over. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be in front okay. of this. Okay. Screen. Right. Yeah. Well, that's right fine. Here, well, sign. Uh, just for the introduction. And okay. You can go Very wherever good. you want to go. <laughs> Um, so, my name is uh, Officer Brianna Schmitz with Buchanan City Police Department. I've been with the police department for, it's going to be seven years in July. I was uh, six months part-time, um, almost seven years ago, and then I became full-time, and uh, the rest is history there. Um, some of you know me, I usually go by Officer Bree because it's a lot easier to pronounce than Schmitz. So, <laughs> and a lot easier to remember. So, that's me. Um, just a few things about me. Uh, <laughs> I guess anyone who knows me outside of law enforcement, I'm big into horses. I do a lot of things with that. <laughs> I'm actually an equine dentist, too, um, outside of here. So, I also do with the police department um, something called RAD, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later but it's called Rape Aggression Defense. So I teach self-defense to women. Um, so if anyone's curious or interested about that, I can talk a little bit more about that near the end of my second presentation. Um, and we'll go on from there. Uh, I have a lot of goodies on the table, so at the break or after, um, feel free to go up and see what I have. I have a lot of um, things about, I have file of life, that's a big thing for Anyone who has a, like a lot of medications or contacts that they need to um, put down, there's a magnet that you put on your fridge. It's called File of Life. A lot of EMTs, paramedics, police, they look for these on the fridge if something happens. Um, that way we have emergency contact we can get a hold of um, and a list of medications and things like that. So if you need updated or if you need to update it and you have one of these, I have plenty of copies, so take as much as you want. And then if you don't have a file of life and you would like one, please feel free to take one for you or your family, wherever you need it, okay? Um, my business card's up here. I have a lot of other things that I'll kind of point out as we go along. Um, so, I, yep, I point out my business card. Okay, very good. <laughs> so what we're going to be talking about today is um, scams. They seem to hit, especially during the time when we're filing our taxes. Um, so phone, internet, and email scams are pretty big. Um, they hit everybody of all ages, so don't feel like it's just targeted, at, you know, in this kind of community, things like that. Um, it kind of hits us all. So we're just going to go over that. And then the second presentation I have is um, not necessarily a self-defense where I teach you how to, you know, do something to someone. Um, it's more of a just a general safety for like personal safety, any choices that you have, home safety, you know, being out and about kind of safety. So um, things like that. If anyone has any questions during the presentation, please feel free to raise your hand. I will answer any questions that you have. There is no, I always say there's no stupid questions, so don't feel like it is, please. Any questions I will take and answer to the best of my knowledge, okay? All right, so let's get started. That's me. Um, like I said, I have my business card up here on this table. I have a lot of them, so if you want to grab like 10, that's fine. <laughs> um, it has our police department number, which is the office number here, our fax, my email, and then um, it just tells you who I am. And I'm an officer and a, and a RAD instructor, so very good. Okay. So there's three types of scams, usually. Uh, first one is our phone scams. Many people lose money to phone scams. Most uh, phone scammers are trying to get your information. So here's some offers that you might end up getting. They offer anywhere from travel packages, um, credit and loans, car warranties, urgent tax information, free trial offers, and any kind of charities. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, the IRS will not call you. <laughs> they always go by mail. So if you get a call from the IRS, quote, it's not the IRS, okay? They always go through the mail, okay? If you ever have any questions or something looks really suspicious, you can always bring it into the police department and we can kind of look into it for you. Um, we have internet scams. How many people are on their laptop or computers at home? Does anyone have that at home? Okay. So internet and email scams, um, most of the internet scams are usually involving like pop-ups 
Um, anybody know what those are? It's usually something that just pops up on your screen. Um, and a lot of uh, the internet browsers, like um, Chrome and things like that, they will have a pop-up blocker. So you can always get someone who's a little more tech savvy if you don't know what that is and come in and they can put up a pop-up blocker in your, in your uh, browser and make it a little less easy for pop-ups to come up in the browser. So um, they have a lot of ads. Those are kind of the pop-ups. The pop-up was like, oh, you can buy this, or this is cheap, or win a free vacation, things like that. They, they always like to be like, congratulations, you won something, but really you, you haven't, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, it's just, that's, that's their way you click on it, and then it brings you to something that you have to fill out all your information, and then they have your phone number, next they have your email, now they have your social security number, now they've stolen your identity. So just kind of keep an eye out for things like that. If it seems suspicious or too good to be true, it most likely is. So, um, And then we have email scams, and they're very similar to the internet scams, um, but they can appear in your own personal emails. So does anyone use email pretty often? Okay. Um, a lot of them pop up in your, um, what are they, what is it, the trash, not the trash yeah. folder, the, yeah, the junk folder. Thank you. I should probably just look at my, my little thing here that I made. Yes, my junk mail folder. <laughs> it's been two years since we've been able to do one of these, so I apologize. And if I'm going too fast, please, you know, let me know. Um, but yes, a lot of times your email has the ability to move it from your regular mail to your junk mail when it thinks that it's like a scam or something. But they're not always great at filtering things like that. Um, but it's usually the same kind of um, title. It'll say like, lucky you, you're invited to this, or congratulations, you've won, things like that. So um, if you don't know the email, don't open it. Some of the emails will have um, viruses. That happens a lot. And then next thing you know, the virus gets in your computer. It's going to start messing with your computer itself. Um, and then they can gather information from your computer. So a lot of scary things, unfortunately, information-wise, that happen on phones, internet, and uh, emails. And with phones now, they're so smart, they're like a little computer. So basically, all your information a lot of time is on your phone if you have a smartphone. Um, and people can just come by and just scan anything, um, your credit cards, things like that. If you keep your credit cards in your wallet, a lot of times um, people can come by with their phone and scan just near you and they can grab your information. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You, you wouldn't think this, but this is how people end up getting, uh, I'm sure Carol knows, a lot of people lose money because they've grabbed their credit card information and it's just because they walked right by you. And you wouldn't even know that it happened. So, but we'll talk about that and how you can kind of protect yourself against that. Okay. Um, a few more scams. Is anybody on Facebook? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, Facebook, it's really nice to keep in contact with people you don't see very often. That's a nice part about Facebook. However, um, there's a lot of scammers on there trying to, they'll, um, create a profile that looks just like yours and then friend people that are, you know, the people will think that you're trying to refriend them again or you've recreated your profile and then they start trying to pull scams. Does that happen to you? Yeah, Saturday night. I was sitting oh. with my daughter and we were watching a movie with my husband and all of a sudden she goes, Mom, I think you got hacked. And I said, why? Yep. She goes, read this post. It was from <laughs> William Hoover. Yeah. Acting like he was me, sent it out to everybody I know, and mm -hmm. said that I won a million dollars, and if he, if you click the link, you can win a million too. Oh, yep. Now whoa. most people texted me and said, "Carol, I think you got hacked." So yeah. like after the thirtieth person, I went on, changed my password to Facebook, yeah. and yep. wow. put it out there. You guys, I did not. <laughs> you know, yep. Just Saturday, it happened. It, it happens, and it actually happened to my mom. Um, someone yeah cloned her Facebook account, and then we had a you know. <laughs> text her and be like, hey, I think you got hacked, like, you need to check out your Facebook. Um, but yeah, they'll send out um, messages to friends that have actually friended the fake profile, and they'll send you like a link, and sometimes they'll be like, hey, I need to borrow money. Um, yeah, they, they try everything they can, so. Uh, just, if you have a phone number for that person, just try and verify 
who, you know, if that's them asking, you know, especially if they're asking for money or help, yes. If you're on Facebook too, they'll create a post where what's your, uh, like what street did you go up on or um, they gather information. Yes, yeah, then that's called data mining. Um, that's what they do on Facebook. They'll put up a post, um, and I know some of you are probably like, what are we talking what's about? Because Facebook dog? is, yes. what's that? Your, yeah. What's the name of your first dog? Yeah, things yeah. like that, yeah. Because yeah. you know, uh, when you do online banking and things like that, a lot of times they'll have you um, a security question, and they'll be like, what was the name of your first dog? And that's what they're trying to get. They're trying to get more information out of you, um, not the banks. That's no. not who's trying that. It's people on Facebook that are like, who was your first love? You know, it's just like posts like that. Just don't put your information out on public sites like that. Um, and so if you do, if you do, then they can eventually possibly get into your banking and yes. Yes. security. Yes, yep, yeah. So you just gotta kind of keep out for that. Um, I don't share anything personal on my Facebook. Um, I just share funny things that, yeah. uh, just for my family, and I like to keep up with my family. That's the that's the nice part about Facebook. I think we all like Facebook for that reason. Um, but yeah, just in in like the information section, just for a safety thing, don't put where at hometown you're from. Don't put you know where you live. Please don't put where you live. Um, don't put your phone number. I mean, but they have all that info that you can fill out on your Facebook. Um, so just. Keep in mind when you are filling out your Facebook, or if you want to get on Facebook, um, just don't put your personal information out there. Um, and then we have mail scams, those happen a lot. Um, they'll send in, I'm trying to think of one uh, example, they'll send you uh, like a check to cash. A lot of times, um, we'll, we'll talk about the phone number ones, but phone scams, a lot of times they'll call you and they'll talk about, um, they need, or you have a warrant for your arrest. First of all, we don't call and tell you you have a warrant. <laughs> That's just something you gotta figure out on your own, unfortunately. Um, we'll come knocking on your door before we call you. <laughs> so, um, if, if someone tells you over the phone you have a warrant, you can always call your police department and check, uh, or go there and check. Uh, a lot of times you don't have a warrant. Um, they're just trying to scare you into getting um, that money. A lot of times you'll know it's fake because they'll ask you to go buy Apple cards <laughs> or like a gift card, yeah. you know, and then you scratch off the number and you take a picture of it and you send it to them and now they have that money, they have the ability to use that card. So if they tell you you have a warrant and they're wanting you to pay in like Apple card or any kind of like gift card of any kind, then it's a, it's a scam. Don't, don't fall for that, okay? Um, so the mail scams, sorry I kind of went off on a phone tangent. Uh, mail scams, <laughs> just watch for any kind of checks they want you to cash. Uh, they'll send you part of the money and they tell you that you get to keep the rest. I've seen that before. We've had um, people come in and they're like, you know, I, I cashed this check for them and they said I could keep this amount, but they keep asking me for more money. Um, it's, yeah, it's terrible and then you're stuck in this loop and they, they start threatening you. A lot of these people that do the scams, I'm not saying they don't live in the United States, but a lot of them are foreign. So um, unfortunately they'll say, I know where you live, I'm going to come to your house. A lot of times they don't live in the United States and um, unfortunately we, we will you know, do more patrols around your area and we can try to protect you that way, but just not getting involved in these is the best way to stay safe. Um, so, oh, just to kind of explain that a little further, it usually involves cashing a fraudulent check. By the time the bank realizes it's fraud, you've already sent the money. So uh, then you're stuck in this, you've lost money. So, and the bank just realized it a little too late. So um, then you got door-to-door -door scams. Man, I don't know how many, how many people had a gas guy come to their house and want you to go to their gas company. Yeah, um, just so you know, if you can in city, uh, we have an ordinance against door-to-door -door people. You have to have a um, you have to have a permit to go door-to-door, -door. and the permits are yellow, um, and they have to be worn around their neck. So if anyone comes to your door and tells you, "Hey, I want to sell you this," or you know, you could get better rates through our company, whatever, um, you tell them, 
hey, that's great, um, I don't, I'm not interested, but just so you know, you need a permit and I'm going to call the police um, and we'll take care of that. So a lot of times, unfortunately, people sign up for these uh, gas companies and things like that and they end up getting scammed or into something they don't want to be involved in. So just keep in, keep in mind if you do live in Buchanan City that we do have an ordinance against that. So. I even had a kid on a bike selling candy or something like that. I mean, a bunch of kids. Oh yeah, we and, and we've had yeah we've had the kids come up. Yeah, but, but this I mean uh, as soon as I said well I think I'm not quite sure because I wasn't sure but I said I think Buchanan has a um, door to door the, you know the door to door thing and I yep. said do, do you have that and he just kind of looked at me and then he he took off. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times, yeah, you'll you'll be like, I'm gonna call the police, and then they, thanks for your time, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> so, yes. Is this only Buchanan? Um, I believe so. You can check with your township if you live in the township or your city. I don't know what Niles has or anyone living in Buchanan Township that knows if there's an ordinance against that. I don't. I don't know. Um, I can definitely look into it for you if you'd like. Um, yeah, or yeah, you can check with the, there you go, yeah, or the township hall, they'll definitely know a lot of the ordinances, and better than I can tell you, so, yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, so that's kind of door-to-door, -door. just keep in mind who you're talking to, don't give them any of your information. Okay, so we're going to go over phone scams, uh, just signs of, <laughs> I got a little, <laughs> little thing here, <laughs> this lady's like, hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm calling to inform you about a recent scam taking advantage of older men and women. I'll just need a couple things if you, from you, if you'd like me to continue. And she's like, okay. She's reading off her credit card. Oh. And, and it's, a, it's a funny joke, but this actually happens, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times these, the person will sound like automated or like a robot. So just kind of keep in mind, if they sound like a robot, don't just hang up. Um, if they tell you you've been specially selected, <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> um, if they ask you your information before you even hear the offer, um, or they ask you to trust them. I mean, it's just things like that. You just want to just hang up. I know a lot of us, and I'm, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, and I know we're all really nice people. <laughs> and we don't want to be rude or hang up, but. Uh, just hang on. Uh, <laughs> it's not worth the time or the the energy or this you know your money or your information. So um, some, sometimes they'll offer a lower rate on loans, investments, mortgages, credit cards, etc. If you want to get a lower rate on your loan, just go see Carol. She's in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just go right to your bank. Um, a lot of times you'll look up a number for your bank online and you're not going to end up with the right number, right? trust me. Um, so just go to your bank directly and you know just stop it or call them. If you have like a number that you know goes to your bank, you can call them and just be like, hey, I'd like to schedule to come in and you know talk about a lower rate on you know my whatever you got going on, your mortgage, your investment, whatever. Um, and I'm sure Carol can answer any questions about that. So um, just go into the bank. It's so much easier. Um, debt collecting, vacation packages, foreign lottery, charities, things like that. Um, any kind of topic that way on phone scams, I would just avoid. Um, if it sounds, like I said before, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So just, just hang up the phone. Um, my grandfather actually got caught in a phone scam, but he's pretty, pretty smart. Um, We've had uh, scams recently where someone will call and they'll pretend to be your like grandson or your child mm -hmm. and they'll be like, Grandpa, Dad, I'm in jail. Can you bail me out? And um, unfortunately this has happened and it happened to my grandpa, but he was smart enough to hang up the phone and call my, my brother who the guy said he was. And he's like, Grandpa, I'm not in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> He, he almost got it, but just keep that in mind. Like, you can call the jail and verify what jail are you in? Where, where are you? What state are you in? What's the jail? I'll call them. You know, verify that you're actually there before you send money over the phone. Oh, yeah, that's my grandfather. <laughs> not, that's not my grandfather. 
but that was an example that I had, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you won $7 million. Man, does that sound great. Uh, I would love $7 million. Anybody else? Um, so how they scam you, they'll keep calling for payments with taxes. Um, they'll say, hey, if you pay this amount in taxes, then we'll get you your $7 million. Yeah. So they'll say, you need to pay first, then we'll get you your money. Yeah. That's no bueno. Um, they might tell you that they're working for the FBI or with the FBI. That's a lie. Um, again, the FBI is not going to call you. <laughs> they're going to come to your front door like we do. Um, so you get to greet, we get to greet you in person. That's really fun, isn't it? Um, so if you stop sending payments, they'll start sending threats. We talked about that. Um, they, they get mad at you and they're like, well, I know where your family lives. I know your, I know your family. I know where your son lives or, you know, things like that. They'll just start sending any threat they can. So, okay. Um, the way to avoid your phone scams. If you have a landline, who has a landline still? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, my grandma still has a landline. Uh, and she has someone call pretty often to just, he's just a scammer. I don't know, I don't know if it's the same guy or what, but um, sometimes you can call your phone company if you have the number that keeps calling you and you can have them block it. Um, I, yeah, that's just something you gotta call your provider and check with, so. Um, if you have a landline, let your answering machine take the message. That's always a good indication if that's a scam or not. Because um, they'll come up with a robot, that robot voice we talked about. Um, and they normally don't leave messages sometimes. So, Also, I know that the IRS leaves phone messages, but they're not the IRS. We talked about that. They don't, they don't call you. They'll send you mail. They like to waste, you know, trees. Um, so... All right, get caller ID. If you do not know the number, don't answer it. Caller ID is a great thing because usually if it's a number I don't know on my phone, I don't answer it. <laughs> I'll let it go to voicemail. <laughs> um, never get out your personal information. If you answer and there's a long pause, hang up. I mean, that's probably just an automated response at that point. So, Ask uh, what state or federal agencies the company is registered to or what or who they're, excuse me, regulated with. Um, so if they're trying to sell you something, you can be like, well, what company are you registered to and who regulates your company and things like that. If they're like, uh, <laughs> that's a scam. Uh, but again, this can all be avoided. If you don't know who it is or you don't know what company is calling you or anything like that, hang up. Um, you can be asked to put out a do not call list Honestly, you can put yourself on a do not call list, but they still get through. So it'll probably filter out a good chunk of them, but uh, unfortunately they still get through. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. I'm gonna probably say that about 10 more times before we leave, um, because man, I wish things were free, but they're just not. Um, so just watch, watch for that. Um, and like we said, just hang up if you're not interested. So, and you don't have to be rude, you don't have to just hang up. You just be like, well, have a good day, <laughs> and then hang up. You don't have to be rude. Okay, internet scams. I know I'm trying to fly through this, but we have another <laughs> presentation after this, so. Okay, uh, signs of an internet scam. And this guy says, oh my God, we've been the victims of cyber crime. Someone on the other side of the world has paid all our bills. <laughs> Man, I wish. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen emails before where um, they say like some prince in India like is sending you money. That's that's not a thing. <laughs> uh, Pop-up windows, we talked about that. Windows that tell you to enter information to win money or vacations. Uh, same thing, they'll pop up and be like, hey, you can win a vacation to this, to Bora Bora or whatever. Um, and they'll be like, put in your email and your phone number and we'll get you the information. Well, they're just trying to spam you with more stuff to get more of your information, so just don't put it in there. Uh, things like clickbait. Clickbait are the ads that pop up. Like, um, <laughs> And phones are getting smarter these days. Has anyone noticed that you'll, if you have a smartphone, who has a smartphone in this room? Okay. Have you noticed that if you talk about something with someone, 
suddenly you're seeing it on like Facebook or like it pops up. Yeah. 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 yeah that's because your phone's listening to you. Um, it, it, <laughs> and I'm not trying to like be conspiracy theory here, I promise, but uh, your phone is designed to pick up things like that because you're a consumer. They want you to buy more things. So say you and I talk about saddles. We're going to go buy that saddle I really want, you know, the Billy King. Those are really nice. Guess what's going to be on my phone now? <laughs> saddle ads. <laughs> saddle soap. <laughs> You know, things like that. So, um, unfortunately, yeah, things like that pop up. because It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's because your phone, it heard it. You know, it's it's listening all the time. Kind of like if anyone has an Alexa app. Anybody got that? No, no but I read the book Big Brother and this is it. Okay. I gotcha. Now, and I'm not trying to create a bunch of conspiracy theories. I promise you that. But um, just keep in mind that electronics, they, that's why you're seeing those things. Um, surveys. All I gotta say is, like, if someone say you go know, like Pizza Hut and they're like, "Hey, fill out this survey," you can do it if you want and it helps them out, kind of thing. But don't fill out surveys online. Um, they're just, again, they're just information mining. They want that info as much as they can get on you. Um, here's an example. This is a pop-up. Mm -hmm. uh, this is clickbait, actually. So this is a Kohl's ad. Um, this is not actually connected to Kohl's though, but it looks like a Kohl's ad. Yeah. And it says, share on Facebook, complete these steps below to get a Kohl's reward. So you gotta go through all these hoops, you know, put in your information, you know, but now they got their face, you got, they got your Facebook information, then you gotta post a comment to their Facebook, and it's just more information mining, things like that. But it, it looks like a Kohl's ad, so just watch out for that kind of thing. Here's another one. This is a clickbait. Here it says enter your email address. <laughs> so now Global Survey Freebies has your email, and they're gonna spam you with a bunch of emails that you don't want. Um, a lot of times when you put your emails into things, people sell your information. Um, so say you buy an item from, I don't know, I'm trying to think. I buy a lot of military stuff, so say I go on whatever website to buy some boots, well now they have my email, they're going to send me ads for boots. They're going to take that email now, and unless I click I don't want this information shared, they're going to take that and sell that information to another company. So then that company is going to email me and be like, hey, we got stuff too, you can buy our stuff. Um, so that happens a lot. That also happens with your phone number. Not just your email. All right, here's a pop-up. Uh, it says official survey on Amazon.com. I love Amazon. Amazon's great. But this is not Amazon. Again, it looks like Amazon. It looks like it's from Amazon, but it's not Amazon. It says congratulations, you've been selected to participate in an anonymous Amazon.com survey. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is a scam right there. So. Best thing um, is, and I wonder if I put it in here. There's a little, there's another example, but up here in the corner, usually you can find a little X. Just click that, it'll get rid of it. Um, and again, if you know someone that's tech savvy in your family, or you are tech savvy, thumbs up for you, because I'm not. Um, go into your browser setting, and you can actually block pop ups. You can block these things from popping up, so. Okay, uh, so here's another one free cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I love cupcakes, but oh speaking of cupcakes there is food over there and I see cupcakes on that table So don't forget to go over there and grab some goodies. Thank you Carol for bringing those in <laughs> All right, I think enough. I think we've covered the pop-ups pretty well um, To avoid internet scams don't click on the pop-ups don't enter in your, your email information and Again, if it sounds too good to be true it is uh, exit the page uh, that you're on, click the X in one of the four corners. Sometimes they'll be tricky. You think it's up here in the top right, but they'll have it down here in the bottom left, you know, areas. You gotta find it. It's a game. So um, avoid surveys. Most surveys ask you for your personal information. Okay. Email scams. <laughs> Signs of an email scam. 
emails from companies that, uh, or people you don't know, emails with titles containing monetary amounts, free items, and free vacations. Who wants a free vacation? I do. <laughs> Where are we going? All right. Uh, <laughs> emails that are in your junk folder. I would just stay out of your junk folder unless, it's happened to me before. Someone will email me and I'm like, I didn't get your email. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in the junk folder. <laughs> I don't know how it sorts it. I don't know the, I don't know the equation for that, but yeah, this is probably about how many messages are in my email right now. <laughs> All right, so at the bottom it says, wow, I've got one from someone I know. <laughs> All right, avoiding email scams. Do not go into the junk folder, like I said, unless you're looking for a specific one that someone may have sent you. Uh, most email providers will sort out the junk mail, but there are still scams that can slip through the cracks. Do not give out your email. Email requests are optional. So when you buy items online, it's optional. You don't have to sign up for their email stuff. They're gonna spam you with all sorts of things. You don't, you don't want that. Um, don't open emails you're not familiar with. We've talked about that. Don't open them. Some of them have viruses that can get into your computer and really mess it up. Um, and then mark emails that you're not familiar with as spam and delete them. If you need help with this, like I could, I could probably help you with this. I'm not techie, but um, I could help you with that if you need help. <laughs> you just mark them as spam in your folder, and then uh, I think a lot of times they'll just send them right to the junk folder instead of in your regular email. Okay. Facebook I have a question, Maria, yes, yes. on the emails. I have gotten, like, we're talking about Amazon. Yeah. They said, well, your order for Amazon has been completed, and I sure. have not ordered anything. And I will go back to my Amazon account, and doesn't, there's nothing there saying that they delivered yeah. anything. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that before. Um, again, I think it's just, I, I'm not sure what that is. I'd have to look at it. Okay. Um, I wouldn't open it, but I, that's what I would have done. I would have checked my Amazon and been like, did, did I do something for you the night? <laughs> I order something? I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's probably just a, a lot of them will copy like big companies, Amazon, Kohl's, things like that, and they'll just send you emails, you know, um, kind of being a replica almost, or like a copy, just trying to get your information. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I have seen that before. All right, Facebook scams. Um, this guy, he says, Facebook sent a friend request from this busty woman in a bikini top. Impossible to imagine this isn't a scam. Wait, Facebook says we have one friend in common. Dustin? <laughs> I don't know, it's goofy. Anyway, um, we've actually had people get scammed on Facebook. Um, we had a gentleman who saw a pretty lady on Facebook. That's probably why I put this particular comic in there, but saw a pretty lady on Facebook, they started talking, um, next thing you know they're on Messenger, they're messaging each other back and forth, things turn a little R-rated, um, and next thing you know she's like, well if you don't want your pictures of, your personal pictures of yourself shown to your family, you gotta send me $5,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just be careful who you talk to on Facebook. Don't share photos with someone you don't know, especially if they're, you know, R-rated, if you know what I mean, um, because then they turn around and they try to get money from you. So a lot of times we can't find these people. Um, we've had it, they have, unfortunately, they have the photos and I, I can't find that person. It's so hard to find people through the internet anymore. Um, and I don't, sometimes we just don't have the resources to find these particular people. So just don't share your information, don't share any photos that you wouldn't want Facebook to see or your family to see, basically. Um, but we talked about Facebook a little bit. Someone sends you a friend request that you don't know, just don't friend them. Um, and then duplicate profiles, we talked about that, someone's cloning your profile. And then Facebook Marketplace. Has anyone bought from Facebook Marketplace? It's kind of like eBay. Not not really like eBay, but they sell their personal items and they can be... Yeah, I did one time. Okay. And um, I don't know what I ordered, but I got a small um, thing to sit on from China. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't... You unfold it and you sit on it. Yeah, okay. Um, the 
Did it work out okay? No, I never no? got whatever I paid. Oh, you never paid? Okay, I, I got you. I paid for and, and I got this um, thing from China. That oh, okay. <laughs> so they put up something that you thought you were going to buy, yeah. and you bought it, and then they sent you something different. Thank goodness it was a what, the yeah. expensive. That sounds like Wish. You ever yeah. been on Wish? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Wish is a scam. Don't buy anything on oh, Wish. Oh, really? Um, so Facebook Marketplace um, is a place for local people. They can You could sell things on there. You can sell, oh, I don't know. Um, you could sell tables you make. You can sell pretty much anything. Clothes, anything that you could find on eBay, you can sell on Facebook Marketplace. People scam on Facebook Marketplace all the time. Um, they'll offer you the item. You pay for it, and then they'll be like, I'll meet you at this place, or you can come to my house and pick it up. Please don't do that, especially if you don't know them. Um, if you find someone on a Facebook Marketplace you want to buy something from, you can actually come to our station. We have cameras outside, oh. and you can exchange there. So I've done that with my own personal life. Uh, I sold a saddle to a guy, didn't know him. Um, but I said, yep, yeah, you can meet me at Buchanan Police Department with, you know, cash or whatever we agreed on. Um, and we exchanged right there in front of the police department because I felt a lot safer. So anytime you need to do that, you can use our police department. Please feel free to do that. Um, okay, any questions so far? I know I've been speeding through this. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, don't friend anyone you don't know. Report any duplicate files to Facebook. You can report any any profile on Facebook that you'd like if he's, if they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Um, be cautious when buying or selling items on Facebook Marketplace. Um, you can ignore or block anyone on Facebook. And report any messages or profiles that seem suspicious to Facebook. If anyone needs help with that, I can help you with that. I'm pretty good with um, Facebook. I'm not super high techy, but I can do a few things. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, mail and door to door scams. Uh, avoiding those. <laughs> this guy is a little band aid. I can't believe I fell for that scam. And this guy's a q tip. He says, Face it, Kevin, you're a band aid. You were bound to get ripped off. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's a, that yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> but I'm bound. Okay. I'm here all week. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, sure. <laughs> Shred any mail with your information on it. Who gets credit card things all the time? I do. Yeah. I get them all the time. Please, if you don't have a shredder, I think they're like 25, 30 bucks at like Walmart or something. Just go get yourself a shredder and put those through the shredder. If you toss them in the, in the garbage, someone, I know plenty of people around here that dumpster dive, and yes, it's legal as long as it's on the, like not on your property, but people dumpster dive They'll grab out that credit card information and they'll fill it out for you. Oh now you have a credit card in your name that someone else gets. So just remember to toss those things. Um, you can burn them if you're allowed to in your in your uh, city. We don't allow that here. You can't burn it, but just get a shredder. Shredders are great. That's what I do at home. On top of that, Brianna, you guys are having a shredding event. We're having a shredding event. Ooh, yes. I love those. Is yes. that where the truck comes in? Yes. 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 Anybody seen those shred trucks? Those are awesome. I yes. love them. Yeah. So Ours yours is Saturday. 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 Layman's parking lot. Layman's warehouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, Saturday, what time? Noon to two. Noon to two. I'll be there. Noon to two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. And so then, then, then you have it any information, you can get it shredded. And then yeah. here on. June 18th, out on our parking lot, we're having a treading event as well, and a blood drive um, from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and that will be in our June's newsletter. We talked a little bit in the main newsletter that's coming out to give you a heads up. Awesome. In, right. in May, the, in May, the uh, Berrien County, um, the uh, oh, recycling. recycling has one for our area. Yes. At the, out here at the... Oh, while we're talking about these things, does anyone know that we have a medication dispenser at our police department? Yes. Yes. Um, we don't take needles um, and we don't take liquid. But if you have any old medications, you can just bring them in. It's right in the lobby. Uh, a lot of times we're open Monday through Friday. The lobby is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Um, and you can just come on in, put your medications in the bin, and then we'll get rid of them for you. Okay? Yep. 
No, you can leave them in the container. Well, yep. So they get they get sent to our drug lab and they get incinerated there. So you can keep them in the box container, whatever you got. So. And here we and here we have pouches that we've gotten, so um, we could actually dissolve the pills as well. Oh, awesome! There you go. Perfect. And um, I think the if you have needles, I believe the I call it the dump. But the landfill. <laughs> they, I believe they take needles over at our uh, but only at the dump. On their, but only on their recycling day. On okay. Medication so it has to be on a specific day. Would, okay. And that would be the same thing with the shredding. Okay. Yep, and when you come in, um, a lot of times we have a little piece of paper. If you do have needles or like um, liquid medication, it'll tell you where you can go to uh, dispense of those or get rid of them. So, but I just wanted to add that little note. We do have a medication dispensary. That's how you get rid of or, my EpiPen when they're expired. Mm -hmm. And like the doctor said, well, we're not. I said, well, you prescribed this for me. Yeah. Can't you get rid of it? Well, I'm not supposed to, but we'll take them. We'll, we'll see you. Because I said, we, I, I can't take them to the police. I can't. There's, what am I supposed to do with them? Yeah. They're expired. Yeah. Nope. I, I hear you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so avoiding mail scams. Like I said, shred anything, credit card, anything from credit card companies or anything that requires your information to be filled out or sent back in. Um, shred anything that looks like spam. Notices of prizes, sweepstakes, winnings, vacations, any other offers to claim valuable items, those are probably fake. Um, and then personal appeals for money or information from people you don't know. Again, if you get something in your mail or anything that seems like a scam, you can always come to us. We'll, we'll let you know. We're usually pretty up and up on <laughs> what the local scam is or what's going on. Um, you know, they, they come up with something new all the time, so I, I have not seen it all, but um, we've seen a lot. So if you have a question, you can always come to us. And no, you're not wasting our time. A lot of people think they're wasting our time. Yeah. Um, you are not wasting our time. We get paid by the community to keep you safe. That is what we are here for. It doesn't matter. Everybody's like, oh, you could be doing something else. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I'm here to help you. That's what we're here to do. So please don't feel like you're wasting our time. You are not wasting our time, okay? Oh, perfect. Awesome, here is our Buchanan Peddlers permit. <laughs> I put a picture, yay, go me. All right, so <laughs> if someone is knocking on your door you don't know, and they don't, if you, you, don't, you don't have to answer it, you can call the police. But this is what our Peddlers permit looks like. Um, if they don't have this around their neck, and you can come up and take a picture of it if you want, um, then they are not supposed to be going door to door. They have to have, and it has to be signed. If it's blank like this, then they're doing it wrong. Um, so we have that ordinance, we talked about that. Um, if you even think that this might be fake or you're not sure, let us know. Because when they come in to do a peddler's permit, they have to go through the police department and we'll know if they're supposed to be going door to door. Because a lot of times we'll put an expiration date on it and if they're past their expiration date, we're gonna let them, we're gonna boot them out of town basically, okay? Okay, any questions on that? <laughs> what would be a reason somebody would have a peddler's permit? So who would you give those to? Uh, so I, I, a lot of times we give them to like the younger kids that sell like books um, they'll go around and uh, we had one guy recently, he was selling educational books for like um, uh, homeschooling. So he came in, uh, he originally was going door to door without a permit. So I talked to him and I was like, hey, you need a permit. You need to get one of those so that you can go door to door. Most of the time when I tell someone they need a permit, they just leave. They don't, they don't want to bother. Um, but this guy actually came back to the police department. He got his permit and he was selling books and things like that. Um, but you can sell, I think, pretty much anything, but it has to be approved through, uh, I believe, the city council. So they have to come in, apply for this permit, and then it has to be approved through the city. So it goes through steps. You can't just go into police, the police department today and be like, hey, I need a peddler's permit. And can I get that today? No, it's going to take some time um, because we want to know what you're selling to the citizens and uh, make sure it's not a scam. What kind of background do you, I mean, what do you do to, to see that it's not a scam? When 
when somebody comes in? I think a lot of times, so my chief was like looking at the information that he's selling. Uh, so he would look, show us our actual catalogs and things like that. Um, and if they're not scamming, a lot of times they'll take the time to go in and pay the peddler's permit. Mm -hmm. They'll take the time to show all the stuff they're selling, you know, what company they work for, all these things. Um, and people that are trying to sell scams or they're just trying to cut corners, uh, they don't take the time. They just want to go and make their money kind of thing. Um, they say they have like their IDs. I'm going to tell you right now that most of the people that go door to door for gas companies and things like that, that don't have one of these permits, a lot of them have warrants out of other states. They're picking up like people that have criminal history. Because, let's face it, it's sometimes hard to find a job if you have a criminal background. But um, a lot of times they'll run them and they have a warrant out of another state or, you know, things like that. So just kind of keep in mind, we don't want to give our information to these people. Um, just be, keep your information kind of like you would your money. Like keep it locked away and safe. Okay. One more thing, I'm sorry. Sure, no problem. How about Girl Scouts? Girl Scouts. Oh, cookies, man, those girls. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> probably came like. I know. Are you worried about a pyramid scam kind of thing? No, no, no. Oh. But I mean, some of them still do door to door with their. Sure. Do they need that or can um, we? Um, that's a good question. Use, um, I have not seen a Girl Scout cookie door to door in a long time. Usually they have like a table set up. I. Where do you be outside the store? Okay, yeah, that's where, you know, and a lot of times it's on private property. I can't tell them that they can't sell yeah, them. They have to have uh, permission from that yeah. company, yeah. you know, wherever they're selling. But if they're going door to door, you can always call. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, just they, to get back home at the other side of Michigan, they yeah. still, the little towns, they still. They still go door to door. Yep, and a lot, and some towns might not be so yeah. strict. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep, I mean, I, I grew up in Galene. Anybody from Galene here? It's okay. Uh, don't leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, I grew up in Galeen and man, we went door to door. And I don't even know what ordinance is in Galeen for peddlers, but here in Buchanan, we're just a little more strict with it because we want to protect you guys. We want to protect our public, so as much as we can. Okay, I think so. This is a resource page, um, and I should have printed these out. I apologize, I didn't. But these are some of the places you can go to to report anything that might be a scam. So if you get a phone call from the IRS and you just happen to get that phone number, you can go on National Consumers League Fraud Center and you can give them that information. And a lot of times these places have a lot better time or resources to find all these scammers. Um, there's scamming rings, like a lot of people that are involved in like a ring, they call it or they'll be like some top people, and then they got all their little guys working for them to try and get information and scam people. Um, so these guys are really awesome when it comes to that. So a lot of times if someone gets like mail, or they think it's fraud, or let's say the, um, like the Apple card scams and things like that, we'll call these guys and we'll send them the information so they can maybe, just maybe catch some of these people. So. Um, of course, you can always call Buchanan City Police Department if you live in the city. If you don't live in the city, I will do my best to find you someone who can help you. Um, so I also have the Bergen County Sheriff's Department down here. Uh, they have bcsheriff.org or the, uh, this is our dispatch number at the bottom here, which I can spout off if you'd like. It's 1-866-630-7600. Um, and if you would like a printout of this, I'll get your um, email and I can always send you this. So, so that's it for like scams and frauds and things. I know people probably have some questions. Go ahead. I have one other thing that I just got today from, um, from the state, uh, might have been Attorney General's office, about, about GoFundMe's mm -hmm. that are, um, I guess some of the Attorney General's generals are trying to go together as a group to try to stop the, some of the GoFundMe's are good, but there yeah. are some out there that are not saying what happens like after they raise the money they need to do. But, so that's going to be something kind of 
on the newer side too. Mm -hmm. I've never done one because I'm just a little leery about it. Sure. And if you're leery about it, I wouldn't participate. Um, just kind of, we all have that little sixth sense, I think, where it just doesn't feel right. I would trust that. Um, even if it seems ridiculous. I know sometimes I'm like, you're just being ridiculous, Brie. What are you thinking? But um, I, I would trust your gut on that. Um, GoFundMe pages are really great for people that need money now. A lot of times, like a sudden death in the family. They'll put out a website on GoFundMe and they'll be like, please help this family, you know, and a lot of times they'll put up pictures and, you know, what happened and things like that. Maybe they don't put up exactly what happened, but I've seen before, well, they'll take a deceased person and duplicate that and try and get their own money out of it. So you just got to be careful. Um, follow the links. If you know the family member, you know, be like, hey, this link looks bad or, you know, this might not be your GoFundMe page. I just want to check. It's always good to, like, kind of inform them. You had a question? Yeah. Is there any website, or I, I don't know what the right word would be, uh, to check an online store before you order to see if it's a scam store? That's a good question. Um, are you just talking, just you happen to find something obscure that you like? And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and uh, you want to know if it's okay to, I don't want to give them my information to sure. pay something. Because I got caught once and I could do it again. <laughs> right. And even Amazon has stuff like that where you think you're buying something and then you get scammed or they won't send it to you. That happens on Amazon. If you can look at the reviews, a lot of times, um, reviews tell you a lot. Uh, look on your look on the website review. If they don't have reviews, I would be a little leery. Um, a lot of times the reviews, you can tell if they're fake because <laughs> they'll have like a one sentence thing. It'll be like, this item, great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, a lot of times reviews will have bad reviews. Like, if that's what you want to look for, like, okay. you know, there's always one unhappy customer, right? I would say for anywhere you go. Um, so I would check the reviews. A lot of times if it's bad English, I wouldn't buy from them. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to be anything. I'm not trying to be racist or anything. I, uh, I just want people to know that a lot of times any kind of foreign country or things like that, there are a lot of scammers. So just kind of tread lightly when it comes to that. Um, a lot of phone scammers uh, sound foreign and you can't understand them. Uh, so a lot of times it's one of our first questions, do they sound foreign, Who, what they sound like, Jamaican, things like that. So um, just kind of watch out for that. But I would check reviews. If you can find the reviews, then that's one of the best, that's what I do at least. Pam, you can also make sure that that website is secured. When you're on a website at the top left-hand side, there's like a lock. And if the lock is locked, that's a secured website. If it's not, then you would not want to be on that website. Okay, thank you. All right. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. Okay. So I think, Diana, you might have to set me up on the next yep. one.